Hey guys, I'm in Denver, Colorado at Electric Bike Outfitters headquarters. I'm here with the founder, Jason Livingston. How's it going, man? Doing great, how are you? I'm excited because we're looking at the Clydesdale. This is one of your most powerful kits. You know, I think about Clydesdales, there's this big, powerful horses that can kind of do anything. And I'm gonna go over there and give it a, just my own like perspective and then maybe I'll loop back with you in just a second. Great. Okay, cool, cool. So, you know, I've reviewed the kits from Electric Bike Outfitter a couple times. I think they started in 2015, it's 2018 now. So they've been around for a while. It seems like they've expanded their lineup and improved a lot of the little, just the kind of the touch points and, and options. Uh, one of which is this nice LED display panel. So sometimes you live in a, a big city or whatever and you don't wanna attract too much attention with a fancier display panel. Other times you want all those options and settings and you can really dial this thing in, whether it's adjusting the top speed or the sensitivity on the cadence sensor. There's a lot there and I'm gonna get into that in a minute, but this is the motor itself. Okay, this is the Clydesdale motor. It's a direct drive gearless hub motor, a little bit heavier. It's almost 14 pounds, like 13.9 and you know, that's that's a bit of a trade-off because you're like, well, you know, it's a little bit heavier. Is that going to impact my steering if I mount it in the front wheel, which you can do. If it's the rear wheel, you know, how many gears can you have? There's there's so many options and I just love how customizable this thing is. So before we get into all that, this is what it looks like inside. It's really neat to be able to open one of these things up. You can see all this copper winding. That's the electromagnets. Okay, and they're all the way around the kind of the perimeter here. And then they, they line up with these little uh, rare earth magnets that are actually glued to the outside of the hub casing and when electricity flows through it creates the repelling and it and that's what that's what drives it forward so it's just really cool to see this up close and kind of gutted like that but of course to have all this copper winding and all those magnets you need uh, you end up with a little bit more weight and it, it also you know it takes some electricity to drive this and there is some repelling some cogging where if there's no electricity flowing through the system you know, they, there's some there's some of that repelling still happening. So that's one of the cons. I wanna get that right out, out of the way. At first thing, that's the case with all of these direct drive gearless hub motors, but the, the flip side is they're super durable. They're like bulletproof is, is how I hear them referred to frequently. Cause you see there's no gears. There's no plastic gears, planetary gears rubbing on each other. Back to that whole Clydesdale thing. This is strong, it's tough, it's durable. Um, and because they're running a 30 amp controller, it's really powerful. So most of the other kits from Electric Bike Outfitters are like 17 amps or maybe 22 amps. This is the external controller, 30 amps. It's putting out more energy, um, which is great. And it's a, it's a 48 volt system. So we've got a 48 volt battery here, 11.6, maybe 11 amp hours. I was talking to Jason earlier and he was like, you know, I just wanna, I, I kind of like undersell it a little bit. So I get the sense that they're really, you know, just being honest and giving uh, the best perspective that they can to their customers, setting up the right expectations. This thing was about seven pounds. Um, so again, 48, 11.8 amp hours. Then we got the charger here. This is very standard two amp charger. You can fill the battery in like four and a half, five hours, relatively portable. You could toss it in a, a basket or maybe into your backpack. Easy to get around with that thing. This is what the motor looks like with the casing on it. So it's nice, it's got a little bit of branding. It's black by default, but apparently you can also get silver if you want. And then, you know, it's spoked in with 12 gauge spokes. So extra thick, extra sturdy, and it comes in just a wide range of wheel sizes. But before I get to that, did you notice this little silver arm thing? They actually have one on both sides of this fork. That's called a torque arm. And the idea is there's so much power being pushed through this motor to move that wheel that it, it puts some strain on the dropouts, whether it's on the fork or you know a rear dropout. So these torque arms, they extend that force and they push against, they leverage against the frame a little bit. And so that's, that's something that you really do wanna see with a higher power motor like this. I think it's rated you know, 750 watts nominal, up to like 1440 peak, 60 Newton meters of torque, just very powerful for a hub motor. Um, and, and sometimes you're working with parts, especially on a, a conversion, that this fork might not have been designed to handle that much force down here, especially at the dropouts. So thinking about that, thinking about what, what fork you have, how you're gonna mount this thing, it comes in a whole range of hub spacing. So usually the front is like 100 millimeters and then the rear, 
120 or 135 is very common. And then they can go even, even wider for like 170 if you're doing a fat tire bike. And that's the thing. They can, they can spoke this thing and they do custom just for you. So you can get black rims with the sidewalls or kind of silver machine walled side rims like this. And you can get it in like 20, 24, 26, 27.5, 28, 29er. So you could put this on a mountain bike, you could put it on a tandem, or we have this really special bike right here. Uh, it was actually brought in by a customer and we did a separate video about it, but they have a son who loves to ride bikes, but he's kind of autistic and, you know, kind of bouncing around, he gets excited. And, and they were having trouble with trailers because it was actually kind of tipping them. Plus he was, his view was blocked. So they, they did this thing totally custom, but the bike weighs a lot and they needed help getting up hills and, and making that ride experience enjoyable you know, for the, for the captain. So they, they put it into this bike. I think it's just a wonderful example of how versatile these kits are, because not only do you have the power, not only is it securely mounted, but you have these extra long wires so he can custom set up uh, wires of really any length and they have extenders and stuff so that the display can be positioned where it should be and not kind of stretched. Um, you can still steer this thing effectively. I love that the brake levers that come with this, they're mechanical by default and they do have motor inhibitors. So anytime you pull the brakes, it tells that the powerful motor like, hey, cut off. I, I'm trying to stop right now. I don't want to get carried away. Um, that's wonderful because in addition to having just a throttle, which you, you might accidentally like bear down on, especially if it's a twist throttle. And they do offer a half twist or a full thro twist throttle design, as well as this trigger throttle. Um, it's just, you know, if you're pulling the brakes, but you're also squeezing, it's, it's nice to have that override. Um, of course, they also have a cadence sensor. They have an eight magnet cadence sensor. That's, I think a good, it's a good compromise. Like I've seen four and five magnet sensors and they're just kind of slow and delayed. But I was talking to Jason and he said that this one can be programmed through their display to be more or less sensitive. So this is back to a lot of versatility. Like you end up saving some money with a kit like this at 1350, that's the MSRP. Um, there's, there's options for setting up like dual batteries if you wanna extend range. Uh, again, the Clydesdale is, they're super high powerful, like durable design, but you do end up with that with a more weight, you know, 14 pounds, seven pounds on the battery, plus some extras for the wires and stuff. If you're someone who has a nicer bike that has hydraulic brakes, for example, uh, they, they do offer a, another sensor, kind of like an optional sensor that you would glue on and that still gives you motor inhibitor support, but these ones work a little bit better, mechanical brakes where it's wired in. And I find a lot of times people are converting a bike maybe they're trying to save money and they've got a cheaper bike to begin with and a lot of cheaper bikes don't have hydraulic brakes so it just kind of works and those are the five star levers from Wuxing. they work okay they're like you know four fingers they're they're decent size and these ones actually have a parking brake built in so back to just so much so much that you can do with this and before i get into the display and how that's all set up i i want to showcase this LED display because I actually think it's pretty nice. A lot of times you you forfeit speed when you have an LED display console. So on this one it says low, medium, or high. That's your assist level. You just press the mode button and then they have you know four dots for how full the battery is, which isn't great. Those are 25% increments, but you know whatever. And then the speedometer is also LED um, 5, 15, 25, 33 miles per hour and this kit can take you up to 30 miles per hour by default it takes you up to 20 that's kind of how it's set but in the display you can you can unlock it and open it up so this thing it's kind of it, it could potentially be you know kind of like an off-road only private property situation if you're in that like class four almost like a moped and then it your bike isn't set up as like a um, dot approved vehicle with signals or you know the proper hardware uh but you don't have to go that way. You can kind of leave it at the default. I just think it's it's kind of interesting and being able to explore this a little bit, that's one of the benefits of, of having kits. Um, it's also one of the question marks if you live in like a really strict state or if something happens um, like an accident or something, you wanna be careful if you have kids or whatever who are playing with this, if you have it unlocked and it's a little more powerful, this motor is definitely, it's higher than average. Um, it's kind of at the upper legal limit in the United States. 750 watt nominal is the limit and it, that roughly equates to one horsepower. Um, so then again, it peaks at like 1440 watts. It's like eh, a little bit of a gray area here. The people who own this bike, you know, you're taking someone around who's sort of disabled or you have a special situation where maybe you're a bigger person or something, you, you might need that extra power. Um, I just want to be clear here that 
you know, this, this can be kind of unlocked. Um, and that that's up to you as a user to, to sort of manage. I like that they were able to mount the battery here upside down so that they can actually use this rack. It stays relatively out of the way. They've got some tape here maybe to protect it so it doesn't get uh, worn down. I already turned the battery on. That's one of the things. This it is a two-step process. So this is a battery. It's got a key slot there and then that silver power button. You press the power button and then you have to turn it on at the display too. I did notice that there's uh, a standard size USB type A port. See it right there on the lower right hand corner. That's not active. And I asked Jason like, why? I like having USB. And he says, well, we put one on the display, not this display, but the other nicer display. And he's like, you know, it on the battery, there, there isn't like, it, it can kind of have like phantom power draw, kind of leak a little bit over time, just having that there. And so they disabled it to try to help protect their batteries. And then here's the charging port. Right, so they got that, and then there's this little circular plug. Uh, these can sometimes be annoying to me because it's like hard to get that cap to seat right. See, it's like not perfectly seated. This is called the Dolphin Pack, and, and that's a kind of a trade-off that I've noticed on all the Dolphin Packs I've seen. And then here's the fuse. So it's like, you know, this is decent. It's kind of proven technology. It doesn't look perfect. Like it's definitely, it, sh it stands out. If it's, imagine it's on like the, the down tube of your bike right like that's that's one of the trade-offs but in this case they mounted it nicely in the rear they also have a rear rack battery option so there's a lot of uh, just a lot of options and the rear rack can be silver they can be black so anyway that one's on we come up to the nicer display here this is a kt lcd display i was holding the power button over there for a couple seconds we've got a five bar battery indicator i know it looks like four but the outer like graphic of the battery is the first bar so 20% increments on this versus 25% over there. Still be nice if this was 10, like 10% 10 increments with 10 bars or maybe even a, a percentage, but whatever. And then there's the light icon right there. And if I hold the up button, it like turns it on, see it lit up. So th this display is actually backlit so you can see it at night. And then that next symbol is for brakes. So if I, you know, if you pull the brakes and it activates the motor inhibitor right there, um, you can see that it's, it's killing power to the motor and sometimes people's brakes get broken and and that they're like why isn't my kit working and it's like oh because the brake sensor is active and then we have trip timer we have assist levels starting at level zero and then going all the way up to five throttle is not active in zero and jason said that's like a safety thing that they they chose to do um but it does override one through five at full power so you at any time you can kind of get a little bit of extra help going up a hill or passing someone or whatever and then just kind of drops back down to whatever assist level you want and i love that because the lower levels of assist can be very efficient and i don't really want to be pressing buttons a whole lot i i just want i'm stopped at a light or a stop sign i use the throttle for a second get up to speed and then i pedal and then the, and everything's good you know that's so this setup was really good for me that way. It feels very natural. Speed, it could be miles per hour, kilometers per hour. You can press that center button here and it, it switches to average speed, max speed. And then uh, over here we have motor, watts. It, it can also be switched to the motor temperature, Fahrenheit or Celsius. And then down here we have um, like trip distance, but it can also go to odometer and motor um, battery voltage. So there's just so much on this display and then ambient temperature, 78 degrees Fahrenheit right now outside. So kind of cool. There's a lot there. And if you really want to get into it, you can hold the plus and well, they aren't plus and minus They're arrows up and down arrows simultaneously will get you into your settings. Uh, Jason was excited because he says I redid and rewrote the entire KT manual like the for the display panel and give you all the insights and stuff. Cause apparently, I mean, a lot of this stuff is from China, like the parts and stuff. And sometimes their manuals aren't really very good. So being able to, uh, you know, have insights into changing that sensitivity on the cadence sensor or the way the display reads or whatever, you can do all that. And his, his manual is pretty good and he has good support, a good website. Again, he's been around since 2015. So for me, this is one of the, you know, there's lots of kits out there and you can get stuff online or whatever, but, um, and I mean like on eBay, you, you can see these different deals, but I feel like this is a bit more reputable and maybe worth paying some extra money for or considering, uh, and I'm gonna be reviewing a lot of his other kits too. So it's not just this one. This is just the big, heavy, powerful one. I think that's about it. Uh, just going over like all the systems and stuff, the pricing, what it looks like inside. Now it's time to hop on this bad boy. 
Oh boy, this is quite the bike. And get my feet all set up in those cages. And I'm just gonna test it right now. Yeah, see, so the throttle doesn't work. I got no pedal assist. I'm just riding this thing like a normal bike. And now I'm gonna go to pedal assist one. Kinda hear it. Very nice. You know, gearless hub motors tend to be quiet because you don't have the gears. There's not a lot of friction happening inside. Um, and it's, it's hard to notice. There's, there's gonna be some cogging here. I can't lift it up and show you. That's that, that little bit of resistance drag, but it's not enough to really affect a bike like this size. Now I'm gonna use that throttle. Oh yeah, there's full power I was talking about. It really starts to go. Very cool. For a bike that weighs 80 pounds, I'm not even really pedaling. It's pretty satisfying. It's a very capable machine here. I'm gonna arrow up to a higher level of assist. And I did notice it was, it was really responsive, like feeling pretty good. It's not a torque sensor, so it doesn't matter how hard I push. And sometimes that can be difficult to get going. That's where the throttle really comes in handy. Just getting that first little bit of speed and then you can start pedaling along without straining yourself. Such a crazy bike. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for letting me uh, review your bike and, oh, and check this whole thing out. It performs fantastically and it's just so neat to see what's possible with these kits. Can I ride in the front real quick while you... It, the, it, or you can <laughs> ride in the back if you want, but yeah, you can hop in the I'm front. I'm kind of curious about it. I don't want to wreck anything, right. but... Oh, no, you won't wreck it. All right. I want to have the experience. Right. Yeah, this is great. And it, look at this with an iPad or something. You can watch, yep. have have some fun on the way. Yeah, because we wanted to do a video to see what his face was like when we were riding <laughs> oh, on the bike. Awesome. All right, you ready? Shall we go? <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh man, these well, pedals are a little short for me, aren't they? Yeah, you can just probably just set your foot there. Look at that, because yeah, they are freewheeling. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to pedal. <laughs> My phone in there somehow, maybe. <laughs> do I, I don't need to steer or anything, do nope. I? Right? I just get to hang just out? Just ride along. <laughs> okay. This is so cool. Look, it's, it's doing it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> Sweet. So it's on. Uh, so now we're on the highest setting right now, and it, you know, it, it, it gets up to speed. It goes. Wow. What's the top speed that you guys hit with this? Um, I think we got it up to 30 miles an hour once. 30 miles per hour. <laughs> yeah. Are you going down one of those hills? <laughs> no, yeah. We we there's a, a part when we go bike riding that it's it's a two lane road. And so we tried to go really fast to get out of traffic. Oh. And, uh, yeah, got it up to 30 miles an hour. It was awesome. It's pretty quiet. It is, which is, which is great. Oh boy. <laughs> You're getting us up on two wheels? It feels pretty, <laughs> feels pretty stable considering. It, yep, yep. Jason, I, I think I covered everything. It was nice to introduce you at the beginning, but um, we were going to do another little tour around your shop and, and talk All about right. how you're set up. and. Uh, I think that's it, you guys. For the full write-up, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, have fun out there and ride safe. Okay, so, you know, this is so great. It's giving you guys an opportunity to go outside with your family and, you know, what's what was it like before that? Or So before we had the bike, um, you know, we weren't able to go out and do a whole lot. Um, you know, our son has some physical disabilities, so being able to, to be outside, especially here in Colorado, was really important to us. Yeah. Um, and so when we found the bike, we're able, almost every day we're out on it. When, whenever it's nice, it, it, the, the, the weather's above 50 degrees, we're out on the bike. And so, the, you know, there's a lot of families 
that unfortunately are homebound and they don't know what to do with with kids or old adults uh, with disabilities. So having bikes like this will be great to get them out of the house and, and get them active and moving. And uh, you know, I mean, if you're just if you just sit at home all day and do nothing, yeah. you lose motivation. I know um, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so being able to get out and about I mean, it is just tremendous. Life changing. Life changing. Yes. That's awesome. So you guys were talking about how these can be expensive products, but that you got at some sort of special event or a deal. What was going on? Go ahead. <laughs> um, so, <Just> like. <laughs> it was, uh, so it was through what's called the Great Bike Giveaway. Yeah. And what they do is they make a, a bunch of special need bikes available, and it helps you raise funds so that you can help cover the costs. Oh. And the bikes are given at a reduced cost. So typically, this bike would go for about seventy-five hundred. Wow. Um, through the Great Bike Giveaway, we were able to get it for fifty-four hundred. Okay. Um, and that goes that starts uh, February first and goes through March seventh. Okay. And you, it's a crowdfunding uh, website, so they help you market it and, and fundraise and, and oh. if you actually we actually raised more than we needed the 5400 and it gets put into a pool so the kids that didn't get enough money in their fund they'll they'll supply the bike by okay taking the extra money so it's a really great program that's fantastic thank you and look at that timing like just perfect right before the train got here <laughs> Woohoo! that's right well this is fantastic you guys thanks again for your time and we'll see you next time <laughs> <laughs> so this is the loading process. I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you guys what it looks like getting it onto the rack. And that just lifts it up. Nice. Oh, and they have that little slot at the front. She just did the parking brake, I believe. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>